Now there are two steps in using the cage system to find chords, scales, arpeggios. The first step is finding the location of the caged shape in the area you want to play something. For instance, let's say I'm improvising and I'm playing somewhere in this area here around the fifth up to the ninth fret and I want to find a scale let's say I want to find a C major scale in this area well what I would first ask myself is which one of these shapes C A G E or D can I play in this area as a chord could you do the let's say the A shape well no that would be a little low could I do the E shape? Well, it's a little high. So yeah, it's going to be the G shape. And another way to think about this is, well, this type of chord has its root right here on the sixth string. And I say, well, where on the sixth string is the note C? Well, there it is. And that gives me a shape. It gives me two shapes that are built off of that. It gives me the G shape or the E shape, but for our purposes we want to keep it in this area. So I found a shape now in this area. So I have a skeleton, if you will, upon which I can build a C major, either chord, scale, arpeggio. Let's do another example. Hopefully it will make it more clear. Let's take G major now. And we want to do this G major in the same area. So we want to do it right around here. So we ask the question, well, which one of those shapes, C, A, G, E, or D, can I find in this area? Or in other words, which one of those chords from the first position can I move up and put it in here? Well, let's show the caged here. Um, let's see, the C shape there is a little high. Let's go down the G shape, the E shape, well, it's a little low. So that would have been me taking the E chord and moving it up three. I'm going to say probably the D. Yep. Sure enough, if I took a D chord, which would normally be like this, and I slowly moved it up, so D, and I moved everything, E flat, E, F, F sharp, boom, G. I would get a G chord right here, which tells me where this nice shape is going to be that fits into the area we wanted to find something. Now the second part, after you've found the area that you want to play in, and you've found the shape that fits for that area, so for instance, our example was C major, and we found the area right here with the G shape, because you can see that looks like a G chord would in first position. Then what we can do is flesh it out. So the, the caged is a skeleton. It shows us a picture of where several notes are for a key in an area, like C in this fifth position. And then what we want to do is build patterns on top of that. So for instance, if we take a C major arpeggio, it has a few extra notes here above and beyond what's in this the, uh, the cage system skeleton, but not too many, just really one, and then this is a double here. You can see, though, that once you've found the skeleton, it's not going to be hard to find arpeggios that go with it. We can pretty much use those notes and add a few other ones. Let's do a few other types here. Take the C major pentatonic scale. Notice how many of those notes are within the caged pattern. Now how does this help us? Well, let's say we're improvising. We're on the first or second string here and we suddenly want to go into a C major pentatonic scale. Well, using the cage system we have a picture of where many of the notes are on these, not just the, what the bass note is, but all the way across the neck. And then we can use our fleshed out version and play those additional notes building upon that skeleton. Does this take some extra work? Yeah, but it's, it's well worth it to tie it in with this scale, with the caged system, 
so that you can find exactly what you need. Let's do a couple more. Here's a C major 7 arpeggio. Again, see how many of the notes fit right in from that caged pattern. Here's a C major 6 arpeggio. It's more or less just the caged pattern plus a couple notes. And let's see. Here is a C major scale. Now, quite a few extra notes, but the most important ones draw right from that caged pattern. So when you tie the two together, the caged pattern and a scale pattern like this, then you have a very powerful means of finding scales all the way across the neck. Now I wanted to give you a few tools on how to solidify your knowledge of the cage system. The biggest part of the work isn't finding where the cage patterns go, but tying other patterns back into the cage system. For instance, with our last segment, we took the C major up in the fifth position using the G pattern, and we tied in various scales and arpeggios to that. Now, a great tool for this is guitargames.net's Super Scale Trainer, which makes heavy use of the cage system and gives us lots and lots of different scales and modes that we can learn. Let me give you a demonstration. Here's a listing of all this different stuff that you can tie in with caged arpeggios, intervals, scales, all across the neck. Now, there's a game that can be done and uh, give this as an example. Let's say we were learning the E flat Mixolydian scale and I wanted to do it up in the fifth position. Again, we'd find our cage shape. It's been shown for us here and it's the A shape. Looks like an A major but moved up. And so right away I'm going to know, well hey, all of these notes are in it. I know that for my Mixolydian scale because it fits right from the major there. But then I'm going to tie in some more and go in and you would put in all of these. And so that mentally you'd know how the Mixolydian scale in this case fits together with that caged shape, the A shape. And wherever you moved it, if you moved it up to an E or down to a D, the shape is going to still tie in with the scale. So you'll know that across the neck. Uh, one other way that the Super Scale Trainer can really help, again, this is our E-flat Mixolydian scale, but now we're in play-along mode. You can set this up to show you the cage system, show you the pattern, and then you can go in and play along with it. Sounds like this. with it and you have a really good visual demonstration of how the cage system ties in with that scale form and you can use again any of these scales and you can put them together in songs and all across the neck and all kinds of different things and the super scale trainer is, is great for learning the cage system and once you've done that you're going to be amazed at how what we took originally where we saw all the way across the neck, all this nonsense suddenly comes into focus using cage. We see, oh, well, look, this part, this maybe this D shape down here or A shape up here, this is all fitting within that pattern. So I hope that helps you on your journey to making sense of the guitar fretboard. Good luck to you.